Brother Simon's 115th article. Wounding God's feelings. When Adam ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he did more than introduce sin and death into the world. He offended God. As an as an ad side, isn't it reassuring to know that God already had an antidote to sin and death before they entered the world in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, who would come to earth roughly 4,000 years after the events of, in the Garden of Eden and die for the sins of all mankind. And when he was roused after three days, he conquered death too. This wasn't a case of God's, God reacting. This had already been scripted by our Heavenly Father and Creator. Don't forget Peter, the apostle of the Jews, stated in Acts 2.23 that Jesus Christ was given up in the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God. Given up in the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God. Yep, this way was always God's plan. No Mr. and Mrs. born again. God wasn't taken by surprise and suddenly had to switch to plan B or, God forbid, plan Z. As if he even contemplated having other plans. Why ascribe to God char characteristics? Endemic. Endemic. Endemic to his flawed creation. Damn, that's as dumb as the one-legged ass-kicking contest. I put it in the... Vernacular. Vernacular. No, God is still on plan A, and Adam's eating of the fruit was the first part of plan A. After all, if Adam didn't take a bite of the... Luscious. Luscious fruit and sin against God and thereby offend him. How could God prove his vast love to us if he then had no reason to send his son to give himself up and undo what Adam had done? Do I have to remind you, for God does not dispatch his son into the world that he should be judging the world, but that the world might be saved through him, John three seventeen. The world may be saved through him. This is probably a good start to remind you, Mr. and Mrs. Born Again, that God alone has free will and humans do not. God is the screenwriter, the casting agent, the executive producer, and the director of the greatest spectacle ever witnessed. Proof of God's absolute sovereignty from the Hebrew Scriptures, Old Testament. For I am El, and there is no other Elohim, and no other like me, telling from the beginning, the hereafter, and the aforetime what has not yet been done, saying, All my counsel shall be confirmed, and all my desire shall I do. Isaiah 46, 9-10 Proof of God's absolute sovereignty from the Greek scriptures, New Testament. God, who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will, Ephesians 1.11. Although we still sin and die, our sins no longer count against us. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1.15, and he was 100% successful. How am I sure? Dig what John the Baptist said in John 1.15 as he observed Jesus coming toward him. Whoa, the Lamb of God, which has taken away the sin of the world. Taken away the sin of the world. I figure the Son of God was able to achieve what he came to achieve with absolute, absolutely no help from you or me or anyone else. His work on the cross was sufficient 100%. You're going to counter what that statement, Mr. and Mrs. Born Again? I wanted it by where you were just saying. As far as death is concerned, recall what Paul said. For since, in fact, through a man came death... Through a man also comes the resurrection of the dead, for even as in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vilified. Yet each in his own class, the first fruit, Christ, thereupon those who are Christ's in his presence, thereafter the consummation. 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty one through 24 All die because of Adam, all shall be given life because the reach of death, because of Christ, yet each of us at our appointed time Okay, that was a longer aside than I expected. Forgive me. Back to our regularly scheduled article. Let's take a look at the word offense from which we get the word offend. 
The Greek word for offense is transliterated. Paratuma. Paratuma. In Strong's Concordance defines the word as a false step, a trespass. The Greek English keyword concordance, the concordant letter in the New Testament, gives the English elements as beside fault and defines the word thusly. Offense, that which wounds the feelings. God has feelings. Well, Paul the Apostle of the nation describes him as the happy God in First Timothy one eleven. So I'd say, yes, yes, he does. Adam wounded God's feelings, and thus began humanity's planned estrangement from its creator. Consequently, then, as it were, through one offense for all mankind for condemnation, condemnation, there also, thus also it is through one just reward for all mankind for life's justifying. Romans 5.18 All it took was Adam sinning and offending God once and, and once, and all mankind was condemned. In the same manner, Christ Jesus' death for sin guarantees that all mankind will eventually be saved and justified. Yet each in his appointed time, which confirms First Timothy 4.10, we rely on the living God who is the Savior of all mankind, and especially of believers. Savior of all mankind. Another aside, much shorter this time, being justified means you are actually declared righteous as you, as in you did nothing wrong. You cannot forgive someone who has been justified. What are you forgiving them for? Are you forgiving them for not doing anything wrong? Okay, let's... Okay, even through the whole... The human race was estranged from God when Adam took the that infinite, infamous bite of fruit. God conciliated himself and ended his estrangement to the human race when his son Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross. Paul confirms this amazing truth that God is now at peace with the world twice in the Greek scriptures dig. For hardly for the sake of a just man will anyone be dying for for the sake of a good man perhaps someone may even be daring to die yet God is condemning commending Commanding this love of of his to us, seeing that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes much rather than being just being now justified in his blood, we shall be saved from indignation through him, for if being enemies we were conciliated to God through the death of his son, much rather being conciliated, we shall be saved in his life, yet not only so, but we are glorifying also in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we now have attained the conciliation, Romans 5, 7 through 11. We were conciliated to God through the death of his son, and again, yet all is of God, who conciliates us to himself through Christ and is giving us the dispensation of the conciliation. How that God was in Christ, conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them, and planning in us the word of the conciliation for Christ, then we... Then are we ambassadors as of God entreating through us? We are beseeching for Christ's sake, be conciliated to God. Second Corinthians five eighteen through twenty. God was in Christ conciliating the world to Himself. We, the entirety of humanity, no longer wound God's feelings. We no longer offend Him. He is at peace with us through the blood of Christ, because God is at peace with us. Paul beseeches us to be at peace with Him, and one day, trust me, we'll all will be. Some of us just happen to be at peace with God right now, just as he is at peace with us. In other words, we, we both parties are reconciliated. You, you ever hear that in church, Mr. and Mrs. Born again? I thought not. If the clergy ain't teaching you the truth, what are they teaching? I'll let you figure that one out. All by your lonesome.